Hey, y'all. Hi, hey. hey. So this is a fun episode because in honor of Mother's Day that will have just passed. Andrew, scoot on in here. We have three moms and we have a, a friend who... I'm just here for crowd control, guys. <laughs> who uh, also... She's here to hold our babies. Yeah, Andrea is like baby whisperer. She really is. She's amazing. But we have three moms that I'm having this interview with today. I have Mary Catherine Music. It goes by music or music? Music. Music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. That's amazing. That's her real name. Music. Awesome. Mary Catherine Music. Uh, Audrey Ball Guest. Hello. And Kristen Breast. Hi. So, the, and Love is here, who belongs to Kristen, and uh, she might pipe up every now and then because she wants to be a part of the yeah. interview. She's a Capricorn. And we have Oliver, who belongs to Mary Catherine and Millie. They might make appearances, too. Audrey left baby with dad today. I did. I left Way baby go, and got champagne. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how that goes. We are definitely having champagne. In this <laughs> already, <day. winning>. Yeah. <laughs> already winning by noon on a Sunday. Are you nervous? Oh, are you nervous leaving baby with daddy? No. Had you asked me that like a week ago, <laughs> I might have had a different answer, but no. I feel pretty confident. Okay, so how old are all y'all's newborns? Because they're all fresh out the oven. Okay, well, my baby, Millie, is seven and a half months. This is Mary um, Catherine. So not quite as fresh as these two, but then I also have a four-year-old. Oliver, and how, he's four, okay. Yeah. And he's very social. Yes, he is. He's a social butterfly. He like just to told us. the crowd. He wants to be a fireman. We just found out. Oh. Police News officer. To me. Oh, police officer. Oh, police officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw his mom's face like, oh, that's not happening. <laughs> I was it like, was maybe we can introduce happening. like dinosaur bones or something. <laughs> yeah. We can start working on something different. Oh, no, he's going to be a doctor. Okay. Oh, great. Great. So, oh. Okay, so how old is your little bundle? Um, my little girl, her name is Palmer. She is 14 weeks. So how many eight. months is that? Four, eight, three, 12, three, three months. months. She, she's like three. She'll be four months on the 22nd. So. That's the thing that everyone does with babies is they speak in weeks. It's, I know. And I didn't understand that. Because I would always get so annoyed because especially after the baby is a year and you're still talking in months, I'm like, okay, just the baby's a year. Can we just say that? <laughs> But Mary Catherine was like, but developmentally, <laughs> it so much happens yes. in month those months month. that it's still, you know, you still gauge the baby in months. Like I you think can't 16 just be like, yeah, weeks yeah. is the cutoff. Like, you can say 16 weeks, but after that, you got to start You're talking, talking in months. months. I'm in months. Okay. Yeah. I'm I went glad to, to know. Mm-hmm. Just oh, this week. I was really close to committing right like now, a mommy develop- faux pas. <laughs> well, developmentally right now, like each week is a big deal. Yes. yes. So that's why it matters. Yes. Because I'm like, a week is the difference between... Sitting and not sitting. Teletubby hair for me, or like I got to shampoo. You <laughs> yeah, know? that's a big deal. It's developmental weeks for them, also milestones for us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's about them. I'm in my pants. Take a shower. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, is that a real thing? Like in the beginning, do you even get to like take any time for yourself? That, that first like little bit of time scares me to death. I'm going to be honest. The first few weeks are, are, horrifying <laughs> okay thank you for being honest because I feel like they really are quite frightening I'm gonna be right there for you I want you to know that <laughs> okay. I'm like 1000 percent I'm this moving is in. how close Kristen and I were she let Andrea and I uh be in the delivery room and we filmed her birth and That's took pictures right. That's That's so cool awesome. that and it was you were a rock star delivering that baby you're you made sweet. it look easy you're real sweet I mean she gave like four pushes and didn't even make any noise and Andrea and I were over there like is that how it goes? Oh my god, I mean, no. It's always like the call to the wild when I gave her to <laughs> Well, I had an epidural, so let's be really, I'm going to be out with that. Like, yeah, I couldn't be brave enough to try. I mean, natural, it was cute. Like, at seven centimeters, they're like, you know, you've really labored till seven. Do you think you want to try this naturally? And I was like, that's really cute. Where the F is the magic yeah. man? I, like, I also, I had, like, I was really determined to do a natural birth. I did natural birth classes and we got in the hospital and I mean, I, I got an epidural for the last hour of my labor and delivery, which I didn't know it was going to be my last hour, but things happened super quickly. But that last hour was the best. I mean, right. I had a big time. So and that's yeah. a big deal. Cause I feel, I feel like I'm learning. There's a lot of sensitive issues with the whole process. Like if you want to do natural and then like something happens, you can't do natural like that can like be very upsetting for a mom. And then like also with like breastfeeding, you want to breastfeed. And I know like a lot of women, like sometimes their milk doesn't come in. Like I didn't realize these were sensitive issues. And then I also didn't realize that like sometimes vaginal births, everyone like wants to do that. And if you can't and do a 
C-section, that's also sensitive. I had no yes. idea that these were like sensitive issues. You have so many expectations. Talk, let's talk about that. Yes. I mean, I think that is so natural as a mom. You have all of these expectations about how that day is going to go and how you want it to be and you want to be in control of it. You want it to be the experience that you, you know, have longed for. And nine times out of ten, it's not going to go that way. Yeah. It just isn't because there are totally. so many variables. Um, and I was super lucky that – mine went as well as it did I mean I really am very thankful there were no complications and it was really quick and that was great it wasn't exactly what I had planned but at at the end of the day I'm just really thankful for it yeah yeah I so with my first birth I did the whole birth plan took the classes I mean I had a three page Mm -hmm. worksheet to give to every nurse that was (laughs) so they knew the birthing blueprint oh my god yeah I was like I'm having this baby naturally uh (laughs) Welcome, everyone. You're blessed to be here. Yes. So, uh-huh. I've casted you specifically exactly. for this role. Okay, well, it didn't happen that way at all, obviously. I, you know, I did get an epidural. It was great. Once I got it, I was like, yes, sweet Jesus, thank you. <laughs> so the second time around, I didn't do anything. I mean, Audrey was over at my house probably like a week or two before I had this baby. And, and I was I like, know, wait, you so... You guys have been best friends since you were five. Audrey and MC mm-hmm. have been very best friends. And they have matching Maybe babies. Four. Mm-hmm. Okay, four. <laughs> so y'all have like grown up together. We're going to get into that friendship here in a little bit. But go ahead. Um, yeah, so I, I was like, I, th- I want to try to do it naturally again, but I know how this works, so I'm just not even going to plan anything. I'm just going to roll up into the hospital and see what happens. She came over a week before I had my baby and was like teaching me We crash coursed it. Crash course. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, I don't even know what's happening. And I, lo and behold, I, I did have her naturally, and it was super fast. With no epidural? No. The first one you did have an epidural. Mm-hmm. So I've done it both ways. So you're going to have to break down the difference of that since you have experienced both. <laughs> yes. you're, a, you're an expert now. So talk about the difference. Well, you know, they were both great. And they both happened the way that they were supposed to. I will say that my recovery time doing it naturally was by far much faster. Isn't that funny, easier. though? You put all this pressure on yourself the first time, and you probably were trying to go natural, yeah. and then it didn't happen, and then when you just let it go. Oh, the second time I didn't give a fuck. And in fact, I was like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do this. I think I'm going to have to get an epidural. But then I got in there and I did it, so you know. How knows? did that feel? Does it hurt? Do you feel your bad dripping? That would be an understatement. <laughs> yes, it hurts. It hurts. Like, as soon as she came out, I was like, I'm never doing that again. Ever. Really? Ever. Would you do it again? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing called hormones. Exactly. They make you forget everything. Right. Do you get a yeah. surge of like some sort of feeling that like they say like oxytocin? Why people want to do it natural or something? It's like there's a high. There. Yes. And because I think the recovery time is so like I was at Radnor Lake three days later walking the babies and it just was it was so different really and your body really does make you forget all of the pain that you go through because like now I'm like oh yeah it hurt but. I would do it again. It wasn't that bad. But, like, in the moment, I was it's like, insane. get this, baby. I mean, the the nurses at the end of the hallway heard me screaming, screaming and, like, <laughs> started clapping when I left the room. I was, like, I was like, she's like, done. She and I'm it. out. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> so, I mean, it's different, but they were both great. And I, I had no true. plan. Like, you had I'm no plan. first time There's mom, no, point. no birthing class. We... Oh, I just was like, smart. pray big and have no yeah. expectation. Yeah. Like, I need a healthy baby, and it's up to you guys how this gets out. Yeah. Well, I think that's good not to put, like you are saying, Audrey, like. But I was to, scared, you know? Yeah, to try not to put so much pressure on yourself, because there's no way you can control all of this. Yeah, and I put a lot of pressure on myself. And in the moment, like. Then you can let yourself down if it doesn't go right. Absolutely. For no real reason. Absolutely. I let myself down in breastfeeding. We can get to that. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of disappointment to be had in other areas. <laughs> well, I just <laughs> yeah. It's just one big The highlight was her yeah. coming out. Yeah. And that's the peak. That's the <laughs> everything there. And slowly trickling down it. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely, you know, and I had told everybody in my life that I wanted to do a natural birth, to which everybody had an opinion about. What I mean, are their opinions? That's the other thing about everything in motherhood is that everybody has an opinion. I mean, Preach. some people were like, you have to do it naturally and they're super judgy if you if you don't. They're super judgy if you don't even want to or if you don't attempt. And then there are people that are like, are you insane? Why would you even put yourself through that? I mean, it's just a lot of strong opinions coming at you from every angle. So, so is that why people kind of stop talking about stuff sometimes? Maybe. I think that would be the biggest, the most important things that mothers could do is to just kind of say, this is your path and whatever that looks like for you is amazing because it's so difficult no matter what you do we all just have to kind of like 
get through it. It yeah. takes a village to raise a new yes. mom. Yes. It does. Yeah. It That's does. my slogan. And I think, like, for me, like, my only opinion for people now is I'm just there for you whatever you need. I got you. We'll yeah. handle it. Because mm-hmm. there's no, don't tell me one more GD opinion about <laughs> where you think I'm going and what I should be doing and if I should have a boob out or if I should cover it. Right. And like, you oh, know. Yeah, I know. Bu- Singa, so do we circuit. need to get Millie? She's making her presence known. Yeah. Millie's like, uh, someone doing an interview without me? She's yeah. like, uh, I'm the She's reason. Like, I'm not taking it out. I'm yeah. trying to be in this interview. Champagne break. Yeah, time for more champs. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, that's an empty bottle. Oh, you better get another bottle. I know, we're good. I'd like to call that evidence. So. Oh. I do think the whole thing, though, with breastfeeding in public, because this has become a thing also, and I know breastfeeding in general is an issue, but I I love that women are just saying, I'm not going to not, I'm not going to remove myself from a situation that's fun because I am feeding a child. Like, I'm just going to breastfeed here. And Absolutely. I think, oh, well, Millie, are you happy? Millie's with us, everyone. Hi, Millie. Hi, Hi. Millie. What do you think about Hi. breastfeeding in public? She's probably her favorite it. thing. <laughs> She's like, give me the boobs. She's so. like, where is it now? Right. <laughs> it's a matter so of fact. Much. So tell me about that. Tell, let's talk about the breastfeeding because I know that has so many feelings involved with it. Like, so many people are judgy about that. Mm-hmm. Do you want to that, pop a boot out? Can you even that. get milk? Like, I've known Hi, a lot girl. of people who can't breastfeed like they wanted to. And like, so what is, how does that world M- MC is like my breastfeeding guru I mean she just always oh, like well, thank you. you know it was just something that kind of came easily for her so I was only hopeful that my experience would be so easy and thankfully whereas like your your peak was the birth <laughs> mine was the breastfeeding is the is like the one thing that has gone so well for us like Opposite. almost Dang. Damn. <laughs> damn it <laughs> yeah ours has almost like gone so well that I like I, I want to put her on you right now. I want her to just to know what it's like. <laughs> just she doesn't even remember. Saddle up, love. And you know what? Let's she was it. so sweet about it. Like she was almost like, oh, okay, oh here we go again. Bless her heart. Okay, mom. Bless your little heart. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> oh, I'll mom's got her boob out again. Sweet thing, you know. <laughs> and then finally, she she's was like, trying. I'm losing weight. And I'm effing hungry. So, like, are we going to talk about what's really going on? I mean, <laughs> guys. And it's all I wanted to do. Heart set. Breastfeeding. And so what you just I wanted the problem was... of, like, where am I going to whip it out? Am I going to put a cover right, on it? Like, I was right. already, how's this going to go? Yeah. I'll tell you how it's going to go. <laughs> wah, wah. Like, I rigged my pump so that it would double suck on one side. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was massaging from my earlobes down. Like, <laughs> and it would be, like, just I like was like, oh, oh, the most defeating. And my husband's so freaking handsome. He's like, baby, look at you. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, other women are like, would be. What is all? Yeah, like, we'd be eight ounces deep already. And he's like, well, I'm proud of you. I'm like, that's Aww. great. Like, so that's we threw in the thing. towel at five weeks. And that's okay. That is okay. That is okay. And that's the thing. I look feel like. Your beautiful baby. She's I know. Alone. She doesn't look hungry at all. Or like, she cares. No, awesome. she's happy. She's got her headband she's and tried, fringe on. Everyone, it was like a real family project to support me through the whole. Well, like, it is. It is. It's and then when I would get deal. anything, I would like feed it to her first, like an appetizer, and it was like I would serve it up like you're welcome. <laughs> and every little drop, I'd be like syringing the drops out, you know. Uh, but that I'm is the thing. So that. yours went well. Yours didn't go how you planned. Yours. I mean, like, that's just how it is. And I feel like because now I'm 32. Andrea, who's here, she's being silent, but she's here bouncing all the babies. You know, she wants babies, too. Like, we're getting in that age where, like, all our friends are either having babies or you're thinking about babies. And there's just a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And, you know, back to the, you know, don't set any expectations for your birth. I think with that said, you do, you know, I think that you should have goals as far as do you want to breastfeed and, and how hard are you willing to work to make that happen and your birth, but at the same time, like, What's going to happen is just going to happen, and there's really not much you can do about it, you know? Have yeah. grace with yourself. Absolutely. Your, Forgive yeah. yourself and, and let things, you know, if something isn't going right and you can really tell that that's, that's the reality and that's the truth of the situation, then, like, having the ability to let it go and say, okay, I'm going to forgive that this is the situation to move forward is a huge yeah. thing. And I know that that was a heartbreak for you, and I'm sorry. Ugh, it was tragic. <laughs> but the other thing that no one told me, 
I want to know the things no one tells oh. you. You do. <laughs> I don't know how much time you have. We have about an hour, and we're um, about 15 minutes in. No one told me that the hormones would be so crazy and that breastfeeding actually, like, keeps that really active. Like, the whole, hmm. I'm going to call it the hormone shitstorm, for lack of a better term. And that shitstorm continues as long as you're breastfeeding. Oh, it does. And so until you stop, then, you, then you're looking at, like, another sentence of 6 to 12 weeks before things settle down. And so that's you true, stay right? hormonally crazy when While you're breastfeeding? You're breastfeeding. I'm already yeah. hormonally you know what's, shit enough. What's that's really this. scary about what you're saying right now is that I'm like, I feel totally normal. So maybe, <laughs> like, this is just my new normal. Well, I, I don't know. I'm here on behalf of Zoloft, and we're excited to welcome you to whenever you stop breastfeeding. <laughs> and I want you to know um, I'll be over, and we can just chat about everything. Thank you. Great. Great. Maybe then I can be on the other side of something and I can be of help to someone I know that you can okay yeah no they definitely are <laughs> still <laughs> raging especially the first few weeks after you give birth like six weeks oh my god insane people what does that feel like because I already feel emotional like every week in my cycle I'm a different person like I already have hormones that kind of get a little overactive and a little emotional already what ampli- what is it amplified by when you have a baby? Oh, we should call Preston. Can I phone a friend? I think, <laughs> I think part of like not only are you hormonal, but you are exhausted, and that that is a the exhaustion deadly is combination. Huge. Deadly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, big time. I mean, that's really. I feel like if I could feel rested, I would not have any problems in this world. I dream of it. Oh. You know? Like, I remember when I was still trying to breastfeed. Oh. Let's not call it breastfeeding. Let's just call. It what it is. So <laughs> I remember like we got home from the doctor and Preston like took the baby in another room and I I crashed like sorority girl party crash. Like I was out for three full hours and I woke up and I was like, Oh, I could save the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean it's a game changer. So sleep is not happening? No. Ever? I don't know. I'm actually feeling relatively rested these days and I don't know if it's because I'm actually starting to get sleep or if it's because my body has just adapted to this new level of lack of sleep <laughs> which I think, I think is what it is, is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so how many hours are we looking at a night I mean on a good night I'm getting seven hours oh but, not but in a row but it's right interrupted right right it's not consecutive That's the key it's the pro- it's three hours at a time because yeah. Preston will say like well, she's, you know, she sleeps for like 10 hours. And I'm like, well, she's down for 10 hours, but they're stirring and like the. Absolutely. She can't find, she can't put the binky back in her mouth yeah. yet. So she's like, you know, yeah. like a little mole now, <laughs> every five minutes. Look, looking yeah, for it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. I want to, uh, before we get going even more though, I want to introduce you guys though. So everyone knows exactly who we're talking to. Oh. And cause this is, I'm calling this one music city moms. <gasps> Love it. All of you guys have connections to music. So, Kristen, she was a regional at Big Machine Record Labels, which is where Andrea and my men are signed in A Thousand Horses. So, that's how we met because Thank you God. were on like the serious side of like breaking acts, getting records played. And then you met your love of your life, Preston, who's in low cash while you were doing this job. So, tell me about like your perspective on the music industry and what you did. And how it is being married to an artist traveling. Okay. <clears throat> That's interesting. So lean in. So, <laughs> dear diary. No, so it's, um, I loved, that's the other big transition I think right now that's been hard. Because I went from this crazy job where I was traveling 90% of the time. And it was like, you know, Preston and I would like see each other in layovers or get to each other. And I went from all of that to my dream job, which is to be a mom. Always wanted to be a mom, but it's a big change. And so that's been a lot, too. And in the meantime, Preston's career is taking off. So we called it, um, as you guys know, when you go for, like, a number one, it's push week. So our push weeks were the same. We pushed for number one, and I pushed for number one at the same time. So that's a lot happening yeah. at once. <laughs> that is like that sentence sums up like the last two years of my life. That's a lot happening at once. Period, <laughs> and that's a portion of my interview. Yeah. Um, so we, he's been crazy busy, like Kimmel and the Today Show, and and gone, and gone, and gone, and and home. When he's home, he's so home with us, and he's amazing. But he's also being pulled a million different directions. Like it's insanity right now. So, oh. Our girls are talking. Talk- love and Millie are having a conversation. They are doing it. I love this. Like, my heart is just going to explode. Um, so, yeah, I think, like, so for me, a lot that has been tricky is just 
sending my husband on a tour bus to go be surrounded at crop tops and booty shorts. Mm-hmm. And I'm at home with a boob hanging out, a scabbed boob. Let's just be really honest. <laughs> right. Let's be graphically Scabby. honest. My okay. scab boob and a side <laughs> ponytail, you know, just, just trying to make it. Not knowing Nashville could be an island, but I'm on one, you know. Like lighting fires on the beach. Does anyone? Hello. And we don't have family here. So <laughs> Caroline, Andrea Speaking have been. <laughs> yeah, like, but honestly, like, it's great because we're still involved enough in the music industry that that part of me is still getting fed. But it is, I won't say I'm, I'm out of the postpartum fog, but the fog's lifting. And so I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go back into that and how I can be, you know, more involved but and that's true too though like a fear I have is going from like having a career and following your passions and, like putting all your energy into it like you said you were in this intense job to like all of a sudden you have a baby like how do you manage career like do you like what do you do well I'm super like I'm super blessed Preston was like if you want to stay home you can stay home like I'm down for that and <clears throat> that's everything to me so I, I actually have this really freeing choice right now of like how I want to come back into it so that's great um but it is, it'll be interesting. I get excited to watch you go through it because we're a lot alike. <laughs> yeah, we, Chris and I call ourselves split eggs. Kind of like how you guys are. Like, we just, like, really connected and hit it off. And so she went through all the hard stuff first, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the pioneer for my yeah. group. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, I think it will be interesting to watch. I'm starting to get back into writing. It's kind of like this really, it's a great experience right now. She has a blog called A Little Bit Fancy, which I want you to talk about at the end of the episode, which is amazing, which you relaunched. But I miss, like, I miss my Thousand Horses family. I miss, you know, I worked with Florida Georgia Line. Those guys. Oh, yeah, and you were with Cassidy Pope, and who else is over there? Van Perry. Van Perry. Mm -hmm. So you're flying all over the country, like, hanging out with all these, like, rock stars, like, living this big life, and then it just went to zero, which was kind of nice, I'm sure. Oh, it was awesome. But then also, like, oh, my gosh, where's my big life? Yeah, also, I was kind of like, okay, now what? You know, like, she's falling asleep to Florida Georgia Line, like, <laughs> blasting because she just grew – she baked side stage, you know, at yeah. all these shows. So, <laughs> it's – you know, now I just don't know. We're just trying to figure it out. We're start, we went on our first bus run. Brought the baby on the bus. We did. With we, the band, too. Texas or bust. And How do you do a baby I on a bus? I called it um, Love's Hello from the Other Side Tour. <laughs> because I used to be in Texas with her all the time. And, well, she was, you know, bacon. In utero. Yeah. Um, How do you do a baby on a bus? We did it. She was amazing. I think, though, we've strategically planned since the minute we had her. It's always been loud in our home. She's taken a room temperature bottle. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, like I really was making her bus friendly. And she sleeps in different beds. So where did crib. she sleep on the bus? Um, she slept in the back. We, we took over the back lounge. It was kind of our suite. <laughs> right. Mickey, you know, clubhouse and and toys. And we just made it happen. That's but, amazing. And the band was cool with it? She was three for three and falling asleep at shows with her headphones on. So I'm just cute. saying, mom goals. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. yeah. We all have them. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part is, if she loses her shit at a show, no one can hear her anyway. Yeah. So it's great. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. She's raging out. Awesome. Yeah. She's just rocking out. Right. Okay, so that's your little music background, and then we have MC, Mary Catherine, who also goes by MC, MC. and Audrey, who grew up together as best friends, and then y'all also, okay, first off, Audrey's dad is famous, I don't know if you guys know this, (laughs) so you were born into music, because your dad is David Ball, Yes. and he had seven albums, and one of them was platinum, so that means it sold a million albums, that's insane, to have sold a million albums. And cool. oh, Millie, see, busting the boob out. That's, That's right. right. No big thing. Do it. So envious. <laughs> uh, he sold uh, over a million albums, and he had huge hits. His big one, which I love, was uh, "Riding Shotgun" with Private Malone. I will never forget that music video. <laughs> when I met you, I was actually like, I, I like really know your dad. <laughs> like I know his music. I love that. And that then you girls smile. grew up together doing music, and y'all were actually in a duo called the Mercy Birds. Yes. So. Talk about y'all's little music background and how your life in Music City is. And then Mary Catherine married a musician. So let me hear yeah. about y'all's backstory. Yeah. But, I mean, music feels like such a lifetime ago. I'm like, did that even what? happen? That what are you talking about? I don't even know. People look at our February mercy. February feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, Mary Catherine and I were in a duo for a few years, and it was, you know, I had – just moved back to Nashville from Philadelphia and was just really trying to reconnect with that music part of myself and my, my 
oldest, dearest friend. So it just kind of was a natural thing for us to do. And it was awesome. It was so fun. We we recorded an EP that we'll have to show our kids. How great. You, you have know? like a treasure. Yeah, yeah. we really do. Um, and I have a... I have a little time capsule for Oliver that I keep that has like an old American Bang t-shirt, her husband's old band, a Mercy and Birds. Mary uh-huh. boy. Oh yes, absolutely. And we've got a Mercy Birds t-shirt and like the so cool. American Bang vinyl and our old EP. Like it's all in there, so they can be like, "Mom and Dad used to be so they cool. Used to be cool. <laughs> they were so cool." Um, yeah, and then my husband is biz- does business management in the music for A Thousand Horses and for FGL. So like we have yeah, a very or like Georgia line. Yeah. yeah, intertwined music so he family. has another perspective on the music business because totally he deals different. with all the money that's right he knows what's really going money, on money, money, behind money. the scenes like how much dough is coming through the door or not or not right <laughs> exactly. that's what he does yeah <laughs> um so yeah that's what we did yeah how um, was being in the mercy birds what was it like being a duo with your best friend oh my god it was so fun but and how did you but, decide who's saying what i don't know <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of did it. I don't know. And we changed it sometimes. Yeah, we did. We'd be like, I really am feeling that song now, so I think I'd like to sing. Like, can you bust okay, out a little a bit of harmony right now, please? Oh, my God. Just one little bit. Come I on. need it. Come on. I'm, like, so excited. One little bit. Just do it. I, don't I, don't, I sat down to play one of our songs the other day and could not play I'm not going to let one. you guys get by with not okay, saying something. Okay. Um, uh, what's one that we used to do? No. Come on. Uh, I am his big distraction. I make him come undone. Hey, I am sorry, sweetheart. You cannot have this one. Ah! I love it. That's a little scandalous when you said I make him. I I know. Come undone. I know. And that's how babies are made. (laughs) Those are the songs. Here we are. Yeah. (laughs) Now there's babies everywhere. (laughs) So there you go. Okay, so go ahead. Well, I don't know. No, no, no. you guys have something to say. It's a good segue to mom brain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> mom real. brain, it's a real thing. But we never, I mean, we were like, I, that, the, kind of the, the evolution of Mercy Birds was that we did it. Oh, no, I'll do it. Sorry, my boss is calling. Oh, yeah. Uh, love is boss. needing something. My, my 13 pound boss. Okay. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, MC. <laughs> well, we, you know. We were doing this music thing, and then that's when she got pregnant for the first time. And I think we both just kind of knew, like, this is probably where this is going to end. Keep it down in there, girls. Hey, inside voices, Kristen and Andrea. (laughs) They're in trouble. (laughs) Um, And that was just, it was just, it felt like a really natural transition that she was going to be a mom. and, And I, at the end of the day, just didn't really have the passion for it. I have a job that I love. Tell me about your job. Um, I um, work at a company called Music City Tents and Events, which is so <laughs> exciting and glamorous for me. And I just love it. And like, she was at Radnor like three days later. I was at the office three days after I had the baby going to a meeting. Like, I just love, love it. Your job. So I love my job rentals, so much. you do rentals, like you're an event planner in, per se, right? Or yeah, we do events? like event production. Yes. Um, and I just loved it. And I knew that you know, I knew I would want to go back to work and be a mom, so I'm trying to figure that out and mm-hmm. talk about guilt and, you know. So how are you doing going back to work? Hey, Oliver. Stop with the magnets, please. <laughs> going to have to edit this whole No, this is last great. Section. We want it to be real. This is as good <laughs> as it so gets. so real. So how do you manage going back to work having a newborn? It's crazy. I mean, my office is awesome, and they actually let me bring her. Okay, that's um, amazing. Which is incredible. It's one of those things. It's great in theory, kind of a nightmare in reality. You know, you just can't – you can't do what you it's need to, to do work. at work with a three-month-old there. It's Whether just or a challenge. Whether happy or unhappy. Absolutely. And, like, I feel like I'm neglecting her. Every email that I'm typing, I'm, like, taking away a part of her – joy you know like that's what you convince yourself of so we're you know I'm lucky enough to have family here that will take care of her our super hot nanny is starting next week so. okay so first off Audrey's like this is like the cardinal rule of no so this I guess when you get you just want a good nanny because Audrey hired like the hottest nanny oh, ever she's, she's like a 20 something year old hot little she's thing. a 21 year old hottie the first and thing I'm, I said to her is have you not learned from Ben and Jennifer yeah <laughs> like, and she really? lo- and the my and, and yeah, my res- like, yes. my response was you cannot put a price on good child care so <laughs> yeah Audrey comes over we're having like girls night and she's like so I'm gonna show you a picture of my hot nanny and she's smoking hot she's like yep I'm so excited can't wait can't wait super pumped <laughs> love it yeah 
<laughs> part of the family now. It's great. Cool. We're, we just hey, rock that bod because you know what? When you got it, you got to flaunt it. That's right. You support it. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So I want to get into a little bit of questions of how has having a newborn affected your life, your mind, your marriage, your career, and your outlook? How has everything changed? Well, I know that's a yeah. lot. Um, okay, well, uh, I'll start, I guess. <laughs> okay, this is MC. Um, you know, everything, it, obviously everything changes. It's the biggest change in your entire life. And um, it oh, does shit balls. Oh, freak. <laughs> Somebody get the burp cloth. Oh, she go. just spilled champagne. <laughs> Do you want to use this one? Like, really sweet. Quick, get a straw. No, she falls. So how has motherhood changed your life? Shit falls. I was going to get really into this. That sums it up. All the champagne, all the champagne mm. on the floor. Oh, don't even worry about that. There are many terrible things on this floor. Okay. Far worse than she Unidentifiable <laughs> things on this floor. Okay. So how has life changed? How has life changed since having, you know, the whole nine yards? Tell me everything. Okay. So I think, you know, it does so many different things to your marriage. I- I'm interested that- in that. How does marriage change? Because I'm scared. Okay, I know you, you are. And you know, it, sweet one. <laughs> it is. It's scary. And mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but you should be scared. But I think that if you are married... You know, if you're in a great relationship, it's fine. But that's not to say that you're not also going to have your issues. I think that it's how does you know, it affect marriage? It's so stressful. It's extremely stressful. It makes you. I, I had the postpartum husband hatred. Oh, what I is was that like, are we going to talk for, about the H H? Yeah, <laughs> husband hatred. Husband hatred. What is for that? both babies? And you love your husband. Oh yeah. So but it's not I wanted real. to scratch his eyes out after I had both of my children because he couldn't do anything right. And even when he was trying to be helpful, it was the most annoying thing on the planet. But I, I cannot like... wait for Preston to hear this. And I just wanted to <laughs> kill him. But I feel Poor like thing. guys don't really have it. They don't know what to do yet. Because they like, know. They it's don't. not their fault. It's, it's not, not their time fault. Yet all the way. And I, I'm sure some guys are great with newborns, but on the whole, I feel like men don't know necessarily what to do with this brand new life. And there's not much that but they not even can that. do. Even if they are they're... great with newborns. Right. They're exactly. so reliant. And my husband loves babies, and he is great with babies. Ditto. But... Like, I'm the food source, so I had to get up in the middle of the night all the time and deal with her all the time. And, you know, just, I can't even think of a good example of a time when I wanted to just, like, Pull his eyes strangle out. him. <laughs> she, you probably can. No, I'm just, I'm having this flashback to Mary Catherine and I don't tell our jobs this, but we're on Gchat all day, every day. So, like, <laughs> literally there is not a moment of our lives where we're not constantly exchanging information. So... When I was pregnant, I went through this really weird thing where I needed Brett around me all the time. Oh. I was panicky. I was panicky when he would leave. I would like cry when he left the house. I just like lost my mind and about you're it an a little bit. Mofo. I, I like to think so, yeah. but I was not. And uh, so Mary Catherine and I were on G Chat one day, and I remember her G Chatting me and saying, just be prepared. After you have this baby, you there are going to be moments where you just hate your husband. And I like cried at the thought of it because I was so, so needy with him. Yes, right because I was so attached to him at the time. And then as soon as I had the baby, I was like, "Okay, you need out, to, you need out. to get out. Like you need. I just it's time for you to get your own place. right. Like maybe <laughs> a nice timeshare in Aruba. <laughs> um, but you know, and and it's just because. You have to figure it out with this baby. She's so reliant on you, and there are things to figure out, and breastfeeding can be a challenge, and sleep is a huge challenge. And it's hormonally driven. Yes, Let's for sure. Let's just also say that. Yeah, like, it's I not don't real... actually hate my husband. Exactly. Right. You guys love your husband. That's why this is so lovely to share, because maybe women listening will be scared that all of a sudden they want to, like, stick ice picks in their husband's mm-hmm. eyes. And you I'm know, through and watch that. Watch them bleed painfully. I would say that, that <laughs> and three three months is when you start to kind of come out of the that fog because list. you start to figure it out with the baby and you're not so stressed out about every second. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm you them can't alive. do anything. You know. And well, so you're tired. You're hormonal. You're hurting because you just pop this thing out of your body. And, and they now, just kind of stand. Your husband's just kind of stand there and look at you. And you're you wearing. Are, you're wearing depends. Does anyone want to talk about the fact that you're wearing an oversized diaper? I, we can 100 percent talk about <laughs> depends. I like love it. I remember. I do not. I hated the depends. I hated it. He's gonna be furious. Preston. Uh huh. But I remember we were in the hospital the second day, and he says, "Man, I have got a headache." 
And I thought, listen, I just thought to myself, really? Because I feel like my vagina was hit by a Mack truck. My I'm body, sorry for your head. My body is still falling out of my body. Right. I'm changing my diaper and a baby's diaper. Right. <laughs> Let me make sure I, maybe I can find Would you some Would you like to have <laughs> Yeah. Real life. Or, or if for one second it was ever like, oh, man, I'm tired. Like, oh, Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. Tell me it's how that kind of shit. Like, yeah. it's that. And yeah. that's it's and to the guy's defense, it's like it's not fair because they're just doing their regular life, sure. but they don't really realize they well, don't understand all this. Yes. and they realize it, but then they're still just being their normal dude. Like, oh, yeah. And Preston My, is exhausted. Yeah, I mean, and his life is freaking exhausting. Exactly. I get it. Right. But welcome aboard. But there's no yeah. mercy yeah. when you've had a baby. No. Yeah. No. But like no. you better <laughs> shut the f up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stand still. Look pretty, husband. But you know, it's right. <laughs> tell me, my, tell me, I'm pretty. Make out with me. Yeah. <laughs> like everything. I was like, we can solve all this shit by you just telling me I'm pretty. Make out with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, if Brett told me I was pretty, no, no. tried to make out with me, I'd be like ten steps back. Yeah. So, but you know, <laughs> I was, again, that fog is lifting. Yeah. I didn't have HH. I was like. H-H. Has been I, hatred H-H. I was suffocating P-H-H. the shit out of him. Like, But that's also because he is on the road so much, I think. Yeah. Like, you, if, if he Love's had been. Love's giving me an amen. She's like, yep, that's amen. right. I know. She's like, I've been there, you guys. You don't even know what you're like and talk. <laughs> I've, I've seen this, If these I've babies seen could talk. Her lowest. <laughs> yeah. You don't even know what it looks like in my play mat. So you guys had the HH, and you had the opposite of the HH, which is what? Um. I would like to call it, maybe I could call it HS, which is husband suffocation. Like, bless his heart. I think it's real. Which is what I had during pregnancy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, like, during pregnancy, I was just, like, I was, it was all pretty butterflies for me. I mean, I was You in, loved yeah, pregnancy. Sure. I loved it. That a girl. Millie, man. how do you feel about it? Millie's like, yeah, girl. <laughs> Let it oh, out. I think she's going to poop. I think she's going to poop. Oh, everyone, we're having a poop happening. Oh, <laughs> is it going well? Celebrate yourself, Millie. These are new One noises more I haven't heard. And good. They turned it back to <laughs> piano. Now we're back to the piano. And now we're feeling better. Yeah. So I guess so. Shout out to therapy. So you know, how yeah. could you live without therapy and great friends who are therapists? I can't, Caroline right? and, well, and Andrea. Like they, we, these girls have. You got to have your your team. I don't know how. I just don't know how I would have made it. Like, we can't talk about it too much because I'll just start crying. <laughs> but legitimately, like, I just couldn't if, – if they were both not in a bed with me, if Preston and the baby weren't next to me in a bed, my world was chaotic. And it was sad and it was scary and everyone get home. Like, <laughs> hunker down. Yeah. I well, mean, you, you, I wanted to be next to him and I needed him to, like – I just don't – I mean, still, I'm not going to say, like, was. Like, we're just so far past it, but – well, and I think, though, there's a lot of things that happen. Like, you also, you and Preston got married, and then you you obviously wanted a kid, but y'all got pregnant really quickly. We don't know what marriage is like without a baby. Right. Y'all got married with child. And so, right. For, it was amazing and we wonderful. In the oven. But that's a lot of new. And you moved to a new city. You had a job that you quit. And, like, the, a huge job that you stopped. You moved cities. Mm-hmm. Got pregnant with a child all in one year. I mean, that's a lot for anyone. <laughs> To not have husband suffocation like, disorder. I'm like exhausted from you just even saying that. <laughs> like, oh my god, me too. When I you totally guys I tapped out. I literally, I like, my eyes just crossed. I think like one that. big move a year is plenty. Like move a city. That's good. That's yeah. good for one year. Meet a husband. That's good for one year. Mm-hmm. Have a baby. That's good for We've, another year. Change careers. That's good for one year. But all in one year, you did that. And well, Preston, and I like to joke. <laughs> we're all filling out. up our. Yeah, glasses now. I'm like, where's the booze? Preston and I like to joke that we've given away free neck braces for anyone that's been in our life from the whiplash. <laughs> <So. laughs> but it's true. like, you know, we met each other and it was just everything. And so it was done. It was like, why know, wait? I was like, you're it. And I like, I had never wanted to have babies with someone before. And it was it. Like, he was it. And it was done. So great. And also WTF. And here we go. And we've, you know, it's like, it's something else. Like, I, I like to tell him, like, we were soul deep. We just met each other. It was soul. It was, like, everything. It's on fire. It's crazy. And then sometimes I look at him and I'm like, oh, two things. So what's your favorite color? And do you like asparagus? Like, you, you know, you, I'm like, <laughs> right? Like, because now we're like, you missed the beginning <laughs> stuff. Right. Like, we didn't, you know. <laughs> do you like asparagus? It's just real. Does he? He loves it. Okay. 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 Good yeah. But you get it. Like, it's just yes. crazy. So. 
apparently, so what my point in this, again, scattered mom brain, is Was that, you had husband suffocation. They had the husband hatred. You had the husband suffocation. So all, like, women and new moms out there, don't be scared if you either, like... It's an actual whatever thing. You and feel. and yes. between Fine. the husband hatred, there is also lots of husband love. Of course. Yeah, yes. for sure. And the husband you hatred... just made a baby together, but it goes away. The husband hatred goes away for the most part. When does the husband hatred leave? Two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> so I would say right around 12 weeks. <laughs> yeah, I think for us it just it was... lifts, like the fog lifts. Well, yeah, and it's literally because you have more confidence in what you're doing, and so do they, and so and the responsibilities get a little bit more shared. So Listen, it just... That sounds about right. I think like 12, 13 mm-hmm. weeks. So how many months is, is that? Because I don't Preston speak in weeks. Months. called me from Mexico, and I was like, okay. Drink a margarita for me? He's like, it's work. And I was like, I don't It looks care. like work. Yeah. yeah, that palm tree looks really. Real I go, you see a palm tree? He's like, yeah. And I go, do you have tequila? He's like, yeah. And I was like, it's not fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Like, do you feel left out? Like, I have this huge fear of being left out because Andrea and I, like, I'm sitting here. She's my horse wife. We're in the Thousand Horses family, and like, we live this big fun life. Our husbands are on the road. You know, everyone has these great, great big fun lives, and then all of a sudden, like, you have a flexible baby. Flexible lives is what Fle- you have. Flexible, like, yeah. Are you like what? <laughs> is it scary not being able to like do all that? Also, you know, yes. Yes and no, but I think, so when we had Oliver almost five years ago, we were the only ones that had kids. Um, yeah, you guys were early. had babies, like, are, you know, obviously most of our friends are just now having their first. Some have babies that are, you know, a year or two old, but, um, but we were going it on our own. And I think that there is absolutely, it felt very isolating and um, in certain ways. But I also was determined to not let that affect, you know, how I lived. And, and I will say, MC, you are so good about bringing the so baby. Like, good. there's a big party and you're like, bringing the kids. I and then you'll breastfeed yeah, like at yeah, the counter where people yeah. are drinking champagne and taking shots. And I think that's <laughs> awesome. It well, is. I admire I'm that about you. Judged for it no one's that. judging. Not Millie, in this crowd, but Millie's yeah, judging you. <laughs> hey, but guess what, Millie? You've come to all the parties. Sister, You're there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Have a champagne baby. cork. Yeah. Chew on it. Bracelet. No, but I kind of have this motto of like, have baby, we'll travel. I'll take my kids anywhere, you know? And I love as that. As long as it's Thank God you're gifted to me today. And I just was like, I don't care. What bar are you guys at? I'm taking the baby and I'll, I'll meet you there. And do you, you have know? to, is and that? Yes, br- I have to leave early. And Did you have to get brave to do that? Or did you just say, I'm just doing no, it? I think she I was, was born this way. I was always that way. Do, so. Don't you think there is something, though, really empowering you when you become a mom? Yes. What is, talk about that. I like, want to hear about I that. I cared a lot. I think what people thought maybe before. <laughs> now I'm you just like. Care. See, I, I and I totally agree with you. Like, I, there is a huge part of me that has stopped caring what people think to a certain degree. But then I will have these moments of sheer anxiety where I'm like, oh my God, I've alienated these people in my lives and oh my God, what must they think about me? And, and and I think one of the big things that women really don't talk about is how it changes their friendships. Talk about that because nobody wants to talk about it. You And, and there's resentment on both sides. I mean, it's almost more than the, the HH. It's like, <laughs> you know, your friendships change. How do the friendships change? Um, bec- well, and I'm so thankful that Mary Catherine was like, I'm bringing this baby, I'm... I'll meet you there, CN10, because I don't know that I would have been that way. You might not have naturally been as just ballsy with the baby. No, no. And in fact, I remember like our very first outing, in my mind, I was going, Have baby, we'll try Mary Catherine. We'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this damn thing. WMC. Yes, yes. For sure. I would Mary Catherine do. I am in. I am. I and travel. And I, walked, I will say, I Mary Catherine has been a badass in that she way. She has. You do. And well, you're so has. confident with but it. Also, roll in. I've also been blessed with children that have cooperated with that lifestyle and have gotten yes. used but to it. But they cooperate so with lifestyle because, because you, you never. Always did yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And I remember walking through that restaurant door, that first thing. Were you Mary sweating? Catherine, I was sweating and I was like, oh, we're doing this thing. And Mary Catherine looked up at me and Mary Catherine goes, I am so proud of you. And it was like my first mommy badge, you know? Like I was like, yes, you know, she's like, my, you know. Well, I think you have to realize, too, like, the people who really love you and, like, want you in their life full-time don't care if you have a crying baby or if no. you have to get up because you I have a, a poopy diaper. I mean, I think that, but I think that people can genuinely love you and still not understand where you are in life. Well, maybe they're not there yet. And maybe not want to see your children all the time. Like, I And that's true. That. Like, yeah. if you're not at the same page of life, I get that. No, no harm, no foul towards anyone. It's just a natural thing that happens. Your relationships change, and it's... 
it's real. It's real and it's sad. Well, There's and some I sadness. Think that, I think it does kind of weed out the riffraff as far as who oh. your real friends are. You you find out who they are, and and sometimes that can be very heartbreaking, and sometimes it can be extremely freeing. Mm -hmm. Just going, oh my gosh, I don't have to maintain that relationship yeah. anymore. You know, totally. Because it just kind of falls to the wayside. And then there are times where you lose friends that you never thought you would lose, and that's and, and you mourn it, that. You mourn it, and it is very hard to get over. But I mean, but then you find also, friends that you are like, I didn't know you, you didn't were gonna be hey, girl. I know. Yeah, like, well, first of all, hi, one uh -huh. and two. Hi. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's gonna be three. I'm like, I know y'all been friends since you're four, but I'm wondering if we can get that best friend that goes into three people. <laughs> <laughs> um, the great news is, Chris. <laughs> but it's funny because like there's people that don't have kids that now like I have a really near and dear friend to me, Leah Turner, and and she isn't. You know, a musician. She's amazing. She's a Leo. I'm surrounded. They're everywhere. I'm a Leo. Leah's a Leo, and Preston's a Leo. More importantly, Preston's a Leo. Oh hey, God. Leos are awesome. When, I th wait, what's a Leo? That's a July oh, baby. A Libra. Or August. Oh, July, August. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Leos are fierce. And an untamed Leo, Leo can be crazy. I was an untamed Leo for a long time. But now, tamed Leos are the Capricorn's tamed best. Tamed Leos friend. are the best. <laughs> yeah. But it's crazy because, like, you know, Leo, like, is a musician. She's yeah. I'm playing a game called Pass the Baby. Pass the Baby. Baby. Mommy loves you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Go play. Um, She's like, like, what? So good. Leah will like, oh, thanks. Coconut oil and lavender. Yeah, it smells oh. delish. That's yeah. my baby at night, too. It's so yeah, part of our bedtime ritual. That, isn't it good for <gasps> yes. your soul in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to talk about rituals, like creams, all that stuff afterwards. We Anyways, have Leo's 15 a rock star. Minutes. That's the point of that story. Even like, she grabs the baby, rocks the baby, and I'm like, it's wow. like our Andrea. I mean, like. Andrea's a rock star, too. She's yeah. like, hey, yeah. Hey, Andrea's just like, but I will say, like, not fearful of the crying is the big thing. Oh, so I yeah, was. I'm afraid look, of the crying. The cry. mm -hmm. I think I have to too. pipe up and say, though, I was a really, probably a bad friend to some of my friends that had babies before now, because I was so career driven, and I was so working on myself, and like. I was so in the zone where all I cared about was like doing me and like trying to establish myself that like if someone had a kid and kind of fell off the radar like it's not that I didn't like him but I just was so in this other zone it's really and it's not your fault and I think it's the other way around too like people that are parents like people that I haven't talked to in five six years are like now blowing you're reconnecting. me up it, like talk daily because yeah. they will forgive you for it yeah really well and once you're a parent you're like you understand now, don't you? I'll take you back. <laughs> they were waiting for me. Come on. Like, the door's all, open. They were just waiting. They yeah. were just waiting in the wings. Because you can't explain it to someone. No, you like, can't. How in the trenches you are. And like, the honesty just... that they give you. Like, I remember the first time I lin my friend Lindsay, I hadn't talked to her in years, was like, so we fought a lot. And I was like, tell me, tell me more about you fight. Like, you're yeah. just like, okay. Like, it just makes everything okay. You're not alone. Yeah. Because it's such an uncharted territory. It is that's terrifying. why I think new moms like need to stick together. And that's why this interview is so great. Because to me, Michael and I are probably like getting close to thinking about kids. But like it's overwhelming. I don't know how we're going to do road life with a baby. Like that freaks me out. And like all of a sudden I don't want to miss out on fun because I have to be stuck at home. Like, you know. But, but you just handle shit. I know. Like, yeah, you just, you just I put her on a bus. Like yeah. she was. You just do three it. months and I was like, all right. Girl, Have baby, we'll go. travel. That's yeah. it. Wait, should I we get her like, shirts made? Yes. And you know what? Can like, we? A baby will travel. Yeah. No, but look at me weeding my way into your tree house. But I'm just weeding my way into your tree house. I made the t-shirts. You gonna shut the door on me? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I got brownies. Hey, everybody, I'm here. If you want your shirt, I guess we'll be friends. So call me when you want. No, but I, I was I was gonna say that there are times when you sit at home with the kids and you are pissed that you were home with your kids. Because all your friends are going to steeplechase, or they're going out like whatever it is, and you're like, and you just want to go to your neighborhood bar and rage until and, three, and you just want to go and day drink and it like do, go shopping. And but it's like ironic because by yourself. half a drink in, you've day drunk. Yeah, yeah. like you yeah. day drunk. It's so yes. funny how I'm like day drink. I'm gonna, and then I have a half a glass of wine, and I'm like, whoo. So yeah, yeah, how's everyone feeling with their champagne? I'm feeling We're doing fantastic. good. Okay, but like that's the thing is like but, even if and they're like, oh, you can still do that. Uh, you know, you, on occasion, but you can't because on the other side, on the other side of that one crazy day, there's a baby. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> yes. There's a relentless There is a baby. Boss, 13 a.m. boss. You. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you don't want to be drunk in case they get sick or no. have like a problem. Absolutely. But but what I was going to tack on to that is, yes, you have those days where you feel that way. But for the most part, you don't because with, you know, we're bitching about motherhood. It's also awesome. You know, Let's and you talk about the awesome part. You're okay with staying at home with 
Let's okay, talk about it. that. Because everyone says, like, when you have this baby, there's this love that you've never known. Okay, well, I think that must be when you have your own baby. Because I love everybody's baby. I want them all. But, like, Andrea probably feels this more than me. I'm still totally okay to give back the baby and then just go on for with sure. my life. Andrea sure. wants to take and enjoy I have to check Andrea's <laughs> pockets before she leaves. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's stealing my baby. See, and I don't, even even as a mom, like, I, I appreciate babies more. But I don't need to stop and hold and snuggle every baby that I see but you love your baby I love my baby tell me about that love let's talk about that this is also something that I have told you about Caroline that like the the way that I love this baby for me is is debilitating to an extent like (laughs) have you ever felt that kind of love it's a child it's crippling I mean I (laughs) like I was giving her a bath the other night just like sobbing into the bath water because Oh my God, I love you so much, and I might have you sleep in your nursery tonight, as opposed to in the bedroom with me. Like it's just. Have you yeah, done I, that? Oh my God, we tried. We did it for thirty minutes. It was fine. <laughs> we're, it's, we've we've gone back. We've regressed. It's okay. We're gonna give it another try. Well, so we haven't like, hired I, the armed so guard tired. for her door yet, right. so there's no way that's about her. Exactly. <laughs> no one's checking IDs. We're not exactly. gonna be exactly. Exactly. So the love is like truly, like it truly is like you love this baby so much. It's not like you want to give the baby back. I no. don't remember oh. my life before her. I'm gonna be really, really honest. Oh. Like, like you're happy you had the kids. She's oh so yes. hard of okay. me. Like it's crazy. And I love all these kids, and they seem so great. But it's like all of a sudden, like now you are like um, they are your boss in a way for a long time. Oh, yeah, 100. percent I don't want to yeah. oversimplify anything. Yeah. But you know, you and I are so universe driven, yeah. and like mm-hmm. manifesting and prayer, and and I think like one thing that I would pass on to any mom because I remember watching my friend Ashley go through it. Like, it was shit hit the fan. Like, I came in the house and there was like half a glass of Chardonnay. The water was running. She was bouncing awkwardly with the baby. And she's like, this is the only way she goes to sleep. And I remember just saying to her, like, we need to stop and get back to basics. Mm -hmm. God gifted you this soul because everything you are, as is, is enough for this person. Your thought, your first response, your gut feeling, everything is tailor-made for the soul that you're given. That's true. And every time I get really scared or overwhelmed or I'm by myself or I'm calling Preston and he doesn't know what to do. Like, even Preston will be like, uh, what does she need? And I'm like, you're her dad. You probably do know. Like, mm-hmm. you just know. Yeah, because you were given this child because you were meant to take care of it. And that's it. And we you have to trust that. Yeah. And that's Thanks for joining us. That'll be all today. <laughs> yeah, let's end on that. That's so beautifully stated. No, I'm I not done. That. I'm not well, done. It's just, it's easy to second guess everything. But you're right. Well, you do. It's easy to get wrapped up in in everything. And at the end of the day, like you're a badass mom. Yeah, and as long as your babies are fed and have a great place to sleep at night, like yeah, wherever there's that is, so much information yeah, out okay. there that you really can like start to second guess. I mean, that's like it's literally like, every second. I'm like, do I do this or do I do that? I was telling Mary Catherine that it's. It's like Keanu Reeves from Speed, and he's like, "What do you do?" Like in every <laughs> moment, do you I'm want assess- the truth. Yeah, you can't, you can't handle, handle it. The truth. I'm like assessing everything. And you have to all figure it all out. And like Pinteresting and googling, and you know, <laughs> I have oh, to tell you once a week. Put the Google down. Mary Catherine's like, "It's enough. It's enough information because <laughs> there's no there's no one truth. So what am I searching for? You have to trust yourself. Yeah. Guys, here's the bottom line: you're doing it all out of love. It's it's true. I mean, think of all these sweet babies that don't even get the love that you're I giving. I can't because I will bawl. No, right? I will weep openly. Well, I want to curl up in your lap like a cat. Just, so I'm just wondering if that's right going to be here. acceptable or what is that? Come right here. And One we more got, glass of champagne. We have, and it's fine. we have a baby daddy. <laughs> oh, baby oh, Ben. Ben, say hello. Mary Catherine's husband, Ben, is here with groceries. Oh, you God. went to the store. That's not your mother, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ben. Yeah. We went to uh, Preston's filming for his video the other day, and, like, I mean, shit's real. Like, you may be the star, but, like, you're my husband and a baby daddy. Yeah. And he's pushing the stroller onto the yeah. set, and I was like, I'm taking a picture with my heart. Like, my have times have changed. That's great. That's love. That's love. I feel like he, like, thinks it's partner, or Palmer. Oh, yeah, that's... Oh. <laughs> Here, Ben, come say hi. We're oh. interviewing. Oh, like, he thought it was my... Ben, give me, okay, yeah. in, in like 30 seconds, tell me what it's like to be a father. It is absolutely rewarding in every way. <laughs> and also. Tell me the truth. Tell me the, I feel the, like your publicist has told you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> tell, me the, tell me the best thing and tell me the worst thing. The truth and the best. Just give me some real, like, helpful information. The best thing is having things that love you. 
And the worst thing is cleaning the poop. <laughs> People are all right. Look, he's looking at me like, did I do good? Uh, well, no. <laughs> is it okay? Should I... I wasn't expecting he this. I just got back from the AJ store. <laughs> Uh, the best thing about being a dad is just being a, a part of a sense of community in your own household. And oh, I think I that that's that. important. Oh, that was sweet. Um, uh, it teaches you how to handle things that you didn't expect you were going to have to handle. Uh, it keeps you in line uh, as, a, as a person. And um, it makes you love your wife a lot more and respect her a lot more. Yeah. Somebody's getting late tonight. Somebody's trying to get some action later. That already happened this week. I'm good for seven days. <laughs> Sex camel. The worst thing about about being a dad is cleaning the poop. <laughs> Everyone must have been around. That was amazing. I love that so much. So sex does actually like go down a little bit. Oh just because you don't have the time. You don't have the time. You you know, especially if you're still breastfeeding. You don't have the drive to do it. Yeah. You know, it's just you have bigger things that are on your mind. It's hard. It's and not it that you don't hurts. want to ride that thing. You just don't. Like, it's not no, it's like priority. It well, hurts. on the Similac Organic shout out, I'd like to give you that. The sex drive is there, and I'm like, it's Nat Geo. I'm like, what it's do you do? What? Take your pants off. It's like a Nat Geo episode. Oh, like, Natural Geographic. Like, I'm like, I just want you all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't, have not felt that way in... <laughs> I'm gonna. Since I'm January also, of 2015. <laughs> right. I'm yeah, very happy for you. <laughs> but I'm not breastfeeding. But also, I would rather be breastfeeding. I would rather. Don't. <laughs> nope. That was a trap. And I won't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, what we want to wrap up with is everyone has their highs and their lows and what's working for them and what's everyone's not. Everyone's walk is so. Different. So embrace your walk. Don't be hard on yourself. And don't walk alone. And Call get, a friend. Yes. <laughs> Climb into someone's friend. tree house. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Interrupt decades of friendship. Get and join in. in. <laughs> but like get a little bit of a, a support group. Like when you're doing this, so you don't have to go through it alone. So you can have those honest questions and like talk about stuff that's like maybe embarrassing or scary or like, you know, like it's there's a lot of stuff that like you need to know about that you don't want to like ever kind of like say out loud, but you like you need a group to talk to. Yep. For sure. That's why everyone needs to have babies at the same time. Like, best friendships having babies. Like, that's why I tell Andrea, like, in a thousand we horses. Uh, yeah. We We're did. not having babies unless we can have them together. Yeah. I can't I'm do this even, alone. I am just there. Like, I'm already holding a leg. <laughs> oh, in the delivery room? I'm already there. <laughs> I'm there for you a thousand percent. I've, I've woken you up from your sleep just to get a boob out. I've attached the baby. I've put you back to sleep. I'm there for you. I've got you. Okay, so I want to, first I want to tell everyone to go follow Kristen's blog, A Little Bit fan, a little Fancy. A Little Bit Fancy. A Little Bit, and it's not Lil like Lil Wayne. It's A Little Bit Fancy. Oh, a blog. Thank God you. Bless. Thank you right. for just spelling the word. A-L-I-T-T-L-E-B-I-T-F-A-N-C-Y. Right. I can spell. Blog. Wow. Blog. Oh, blog at the end. A Little Bit Fancy blog.com. And Kristen, what are you going to be talking about on this blog? You know, I don't have a direction yet. Mm-hmm. I'm just yourself. You'll be proud of me. I'm giving myself no rules, and I'm just spreading some theories about our little home, our life, love style, some things that we dig. You know, just whatever for now. Okay. It's just the purpose is to write. I need write. I need You're writing. You're a words like I need person. Air. You're oh, very much a words it. person, and you need to express your words. You've got a lot of words to say, which are very helpful. Yeah. And like your new chapter, motherhood, like navigating with a I'm you know a rock star husband. Actress. So, like, I just needed something. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, Preston's a wife and loves mom, and so I just need to find, like, you know, we're just back to, like, what does Kristen want to do? Well, and I think we got to wrap up, but I do think that that's key. Like, do you ha- do you think it's important to carve out a little spot for yourself? Because, like, when you become a mom, you do become selfless. Do you yes. feel like you need to, like, have something that's just yours? Even yes. if it's tiny. Yeah, even like, if it's tiny and, and as hard as it will be because mom guilt, we could do a whole episode on mom guilt, but... Um, you know, it's important. You have to do it. So just have like a minutes. little thing that's yours. Yeah. Absolutely. Or, or an, Even you know, if it's like it an episode of Scandal or anything. Like listening or, to a podcast while you take a walk. Right. Whatever yeah. it is, is what make the time. Have something for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's leave your light. I like to leave every episode with leave your light. So leave some inspiration. Give me some inspiration, something that inspires you or how you want to inspire. We're going to start with MC. Oh, no, don't start with Okay, me. we're going to start with Kristen, and we're going to go it to this loaded. Side. I can't believe I didn't, like, think about I this prior what? to. I know, I, I didn't know either. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, is leave it, your light. Is it going to be – okay, I'm going to give a tidbit of advice. And I actually read this, and this okay, saved me. 
It Hi. saved me. Okay, you guys have to use your inside voices over there. Love's like, hey, Millie. <laughs> okay, so I read an interview with Jace, uh, Jesse James Decker. I've said I've preached this so many times. But in this interview, she said, do one thing a day that makes you feel pretty. Whether it's curl your hair or wear lipstick. It doesn't matter if you never leave the house. Just do one thing a day that makes you feel I love pretty. That. And so I would pass that on. It saved my life. I mean, there were days where I was still in the sweatpant, but I'll be damned if my hair was not looking like I was at ACMs. <laughs> and then the second thing was my friend Lindsay told me, do something that makes you feel normal. So, like, if it's make the bed, whatever. I have to have a clean kitchen. So curled hair and clean kitchen is what saved me months zero through three. Okay. Whatever it is for you, take the time to do Just it. Just take the time. Make the yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Audrey Ball, tell me. I would say. Audrey Ball guest. Audrey Sorry. Ball guest, yeah. Um. I would say take it easy on yourself and take it easy on each other. Like your hubs. On, on everybody, on other moms, on your husband, like just, because I forget that a lot. I'm super hard on maybe the people in my life. Like my expectations are super, super high, both myself and the others. So like, just take it easy. Enjoy the moment. It is what it is. And allow people to kind of go their own paths, whatever it looks like. And just accept That's it. so hard. I can't, ugh. I don't don't, even, I don't, I'm like so I'm, proud of you. I'm saying it. I don't even buy it. Okay, Mary Cannon, wrap us up. Okay, I'm going to piggyback on what she said because I was feeling a lot of this t- this morning about just kind of take one day at a time and accept what the day has become and sort of just embrace it and know that it's okay. You know, I'm not proud that I let my child watch two hours of the iPad today, but you know what? I cleaned my bathroom and I did laundry and I went for a walk and we cut the grass. So And you hosted us. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, you know, it's okay. He's not going to watch two hours of iPad every day. It's not the end of the world, you know? Yeah. So just like, I think we touched on like grace and just giving yourself plenty grace. of that. and. You know, just trying to remember, you know, tomorrow's another day and it'll be totally different. And your intentions are always good. So you always. have to forgive yourself because, like, you taught me that. You can't be, I mean, you y'all can't do are, everything. You guys are super mom. Being super mom is caring as much as you guys care. Like, the fact that you have kids that you guys think about 24 hours a day and care so much, like, how blessed are those children to be born into these households, you know? Like, Googling seeing, infant development, for example. <laughs> oh my God, the Googling. <laughs> so don't Google. My biggest Google, Google advice don't is Google. don't Google. <laughs> <laughs> have baby will travel okay thank you guys for joining me this is my music city moms episodes in honor of mother's day you are the best love you girl peace bye